Hello and welcome to the maiden video of this thing here. Now, for those of you that have been watching the channel and staying with this series, I'll put a link down to the series below. This is obviously going to be something that you've been waiting for a long time. I tried to do the maiden back in July. Unfortunately, that was a complete disaster. That was before I changed the firmware, uh, the bootloader on the model, which meant that it would boot reliably every time. Took it to the field with a friend of mine. We had it all set up and uh, we had one unsuccessful attempt. I'll talk about that a little bit bit more in a minute and then we couldn't get it to boot again so had to bring it home had to flash the bootloader and then with weather travel holidays summer all that stuff i didn't manage to get back to the field until this week so the ar wing has flown so i wanted to show you some of that footage go through it and also through some of the tips and tricks if you have been following along surprise surprise it went very smoothly with one little exception so let me talk about that first now uh the very first throw so a big thank you to ross my flying buddy who okay. tends to do the throws on these just so i can fly uh, try and catch it okay. i always try and do maidens of wings like this line of sight rather than fpv and record the fpv on the goggles sat on the ground just so i can look at the footage on the way back make sure that everything's working okay there isn't any interference but when Ross uh, threw it for the first time, um, it was a very gentle throw and I had almost full power and yet we didn't still get into the air. And the thing with the default motor and prop, the tri bladed prop that comes with this model, is you do have to put an full power yeah. and give it a really good yeah, throw no, for it to get into the air. Once it's in the air, it's actually really good. It's pulling about six amps in cruise. Whoa. But I think there's an opportunity to replace that three-bladed prop with a slightly longer two-bladed prop uh, to get a little bit more efficiency and maybe a little bit more poke on takeoff. Looking at the current pull at uh, full throttle, uh, we, there is a little bit of headroom, so that might be the thing that I do. But with all that said, for the next time, it was then give it full throttle. Ross went for a really good throw and away it went. Now I'm taking off in fly-by-wire A here. Uh, normally I'd recommend that you start in manual mode, but having done this a couple of times now, I'm pretty confident that fly-by-wire A is gonna work. Now I have the servo auto trim stuff all turned on. So what that means is fly-by-wire A is also trimming all the servo. So I can flick straight back into manual mode and the model is trimmed beautifully to fly level as it was told in Mission Planner. Now, as usual, this is logging all of the data onto the SD card so you can download all of that data and look at the flight in Google Earth. One of the really cool things that you can do with Ardu Plane. And there is absolutely no surprises here at all. It is flying really, really well. There are only a couple of things that I would uh, probably think about doing now. I've tried the Maiden. The first thing, of course, is that it does need full power. Um, I'd like to have a little bit more headroom than that. It might have helped if there was a little bit of wind and we were throwing it into the wind. I might play, as well as maybe messing around with the prop a little bit, is also put auto launch here as well. That can be really handy, a good throw with auto launch kind of takes care of a lot of the messing about. So I'm going to do a video on auto launch, uh, probably with the guys at 3DXR. I uh, was talking to them about some of the tips and tricks, so bear with me, there's a video coming on that. Um, looking at the footage from the FPV stuff, in cruise, the nose is very slightly elevated. So at cruise throttle, about 50%, which is pulling about 6.1, 6.4 amps. It is gaining altitude very slightly. So that means I need to go back to the desk and I need to drop the level down just a little bit from where it is now. I'd probably only do two or three degrees and have another go and see how that is. I was very lucky with the previous omnibus build. I got it pretty much spot on straight out the gate. The wing, of course, is going to need a tune. It's a million miles away from where it needs to be. So see my video on for how that's done. It's relatively straightforward. Uh, it's not as good as a manual tune, but it means that for those of you that don't want to learn about PIDs and how you do all that stuff, you can just flick it into that mode. The nice thing is, is now we've got this all working and it's working really well, 
I can play with the telemetry on Crossfire. Uh, if any of you have done this already, please get in touch. Now, the default way to do it is have a Mavlink telemetry output that goes into the Crossfire receiver, have that come down to the Crossfire, the full-size Crossfire module, and then share that via Bluetooth to some other device that then you can view all the data on. Now that's nice, but I'm just wondering about doing a similar thing to what we did last time with the Yapu script, where you could actually have all that information on screen. I've got really used to having all of that verbal confirmation back to me as I'm flying around, thanks to things like Yapu. So if any of you have done that, then please let me know. And the last thing to think about is I have made one of the wings on this model an awful lot easier to remove. So it fits in the, the boot of my car. And that's been great, but there's a couple of other ideas. Having now done it two or three times, um, there's a couple of easier ways that I could probably make it so it's faster to take apart. Um, if you're interested in me making a video on how I do that, so things like that are easier to transport, then uh, let me know in the comments down below and I'll do another video. But in summary, there we go, it flies, uh, not a massive surprise, a little bit more power on takeoff would be great, but the follow-up things are all pretty standard Ardu Pilot stuff. But again, if you've had experience of using telemetry from Ardu Pilot with the Crossfire system down to the radio um, with things like the Yapu Lua script, then do let me know. And similarly, if you want me to make a quick video showing how to make it so that the, uh, the wing comes off the hour wing a little bit easier for transport, then let me know that too. Thanks for watching the video and watching right to the very end. You can find me in all the usual places on social media. And if you like the video and like what I'm doing here, then hit the subscribe button and hit the bell notification icon too. If you really like what I'm doing, you can go the extra mile and become one of my Patreons for access to me directly for support and also giveaways and regular updates too. If you're looking for particular content, then check out the playlist. I organize all of my videos into playlists. So if you're looking for a particular topic, you can find everything here. If it's called Introduction To, it's designed to start very simply and build on that simple introduction to teach you all about it. If it's called For Beginners, then that is really aimed at people who are brand new to that part of the hobby. You can also search on YouTube for anything that you're interested in using the search function at the top. So iNav Painless 360 will find all of my videos and even the playlists around iNav. So thanks again for watching and happy flying.